Good afternoon, everyone. It's Kevin O'Rourke here, and it's wine o'clock here at the Wine Man's. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about the world's best wine. And I'm going to tell you why it's the world's best wine. And I'm going to seduce you and entice you with all of the different things as to why you should buy a bottle of this wine. So let's start with a little backstory. So the maker of this wine, he has been making wines since he was 10 years old. And he worked for 12 years with his father who took him all around all of the estates, the family owned estates, showing him exactly what to do with every single grape variety. Now this particular wine, he uses five different grape varieties. Each of these are hand-picked. They're gently brought very, very carefully to the center of the winery, where the actual bottling and all the fermentation process takes place. This is very important because it's done in basically in the middle of the night when all of the heat is not affecting the actual vines in the vineyard. Everything is then pressed really, really gently and it's done on a bleeding process where they just massage, gently massage these grapes. And that produces this incredible, very, very pale fluid. So it, because it mixes up some red grapes and also some white grapes, it makes it just a magnificent particular rosé. Now, let's examine what makes it the world's best rosé. So there's a number of different reasons behind this. The provenance of the grower is incredibly important. The actual soil, the fact that this is made in an, or it's totally organic as everything that this particular producer makes is organic. He's also the world's leading authority, in my opinion, on biodynamic wines. And that's really, really important because he wants to produce living wines that taste incredible from living soils, harnessing all of the goodness of the world, all the soil, the sun, the moon, the stars, all of the little pixie juice and everything that he puts on these incredible vines to produce amazing fluid. Now, what happens then is this particular wine, which is an incredible wine, is put in oak casks where it just sits and all of the leaves, which is all of the stuff from the vines, all of the skins, the pips, everything is all left. And so it just matures and just sits there and, and just relaxes and just chills out in the winery. And the reason for that is to impart some complexity to the wine as well. All of these factors go into what makes the world's best Rosé. Now, chuck it in a beautiful bottle with an incredible bottom on it, make it with a brilliant story, have it so that it gets entered into the best awards and it wins the best award classified as world's best rosé. You have a very, very expensive wine then. And the real difference is that when you put two different rosés back to back, you don't know whether one of them is good or one of them is bad. And the reason why I'm going to tell you this now, now everything I've told you up to this point is true, okay? But what happens is our brains work an awful lot on trust and likability. You may like me, you may not. You may trust me, you may not. But those of my customers who know me and trust me will buy because I say something is really, really good. Does it mean you're going to like it? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Now it's time for the great big reveal. The Clos de Templer. This is the 2019 vintage from Gérard Bertrand. He makes this in the Languedoc. And with the manual harvesting in grapes and with everything that goes on, I mean, it is just, I mean, look at the beautiful bottle. It's a beautiful, beautiful one. I'm holding a competition to win this bottle. It's the only one I've got. It's over 200 pounds a bottle. And I'm gonna give it away. And I'm gonna put the link in on the bottom of this and I'm going to run this competition for about a week so if you're watching this you get the chance to win it but what I want to do is really emphasize the difference because here we have a tale of two roses they're both from the same grower one is 200 pound a bottle one's about a tenner a bottle but I can tell you till I'm blue in the face that this is an amazing rose but if you don't believe me, if I don't have that likability, that trust factor, that 21 years now of telling people about amazing wines, you're not going to, you're not going to believe me. And what happens with an awful lot of the gongs and the golds and the silvers and the bronzes and a huge amount of these competitions is they just give you a gong just for turning up in some of these competitions. It really is not good. It's like the 4,000th 
bronze medal awarded to the wine that could be bothered to enter. I mean, who cares about competitions like that? Where is it big Big competitions where you only get to enter them if you're a trophy winner or a gold winner in other competitions. It's the only way you can get into it. And that is what has happened with the Clodagh Templar. It's an amazing wine. 200 pound a bottle, I'm not gonna sell loads of it. I don't care, I wanna give a bottle away <laughs> because I think people who watch this video should be rewarded with a wine like this. I mean, but the, the whole point of, of what I'm saying in this particular video is we, as consumers, we can be steered, manipulated, marketing, you know, stories, different things that can tell you and can entice you. And people will do that. And I will do it. But I won't do it intentionally. I will, do, I will be honest with you and I will tell you exactly what I think of a wine. I will tell you if I think it's a good wine, if I think it's a bad wine, if I think it's an indifferent wine. That's a different form of marketing. This is what's allowed me to basically sell for 21 years now online. Because I couldn't do that unless I could put my hand on my heart, sleep at night, and know that every single thing I've done comes from integrity. So I'll leave you. With the Clona Temple. I mean, it's a beautiful wine. Look at it. I wish I was like, and this is the 2019 vintage. This was the award winning vintage. You can't buy it anywhere. Sorry, but I've got a bottle and I'm going to be giving it away. And one lucky person is going to get it. Hope you're lucky to enough to have watched this video. Maybe learned a little bit about marketing as well and the sales tools and tactics that are used not only in the wine trade, but in other trades as well. So don't always be steered by what I say is good. Examine, look at things in your own mind as well. Do I even like rosé? Do I like sweet rosé? Do I like dry rosé? Do I know, not know what I like? Do I not know what makes a good rosé? This is all fine. If you need some help, reach out, ask me, be more than happy to help you. Hope you've enjoyed this video and leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've ever bought a wine that you think, God, this is rubbish. Or, oh my God, this is even better than I thought. Or, ooh, but what about vintages? They say, I've got to keep it for so long. It was a good year. It was a bad year. Any of these different things, they are all put in to basically bamboozle and hoodwink and make wine this big mystery. Did I not tell you that it's a big mystery in wine? Uh -huh. But it is. <laughs> but it isn't. It's quite simple. It's made. Grapes are squished. They put in bottles. It gives you great pleasure. They're amazing things. And it can also give you a headache if you buy really cheap and nasty stuff. And it can also give you a headache if you drink far too many bottles of the good stuff. So you take your choice on how much or how little or what quality you want to drink. But I hope you've enjoyed today. Cheers.